She welcome to introductions to New Testament Greek with Moses if they are doing. Be attentive. Keep following. Don't go away. God bless you. You welcome back. May God bless you as you listen in Jesus' name. In a previous lesson, we considered the precedent indicative active of Luho verb. Therein, we conjugated Luho as a pattern for other verbs that has as their inflection Omega. So, in this lesson, we shall be considering Eo verbs. There are many verbs whose tense end in epsilon. So, for those verbs that has their tense ending in epsilon, there is a pattern in which they are also to be, uh, uh, there is a pattern to be followed for their conjugation. So, for the conjugation, we shall therefore make use of phileho. A word which means I love as a conjugation pattern for such verbs. Now to conjugate phileho, the following things have to be noted. When endings are added to such terms, I mean terms ending in epsilon, certain contractions will definitely take place. So when we have epsilon combines with epsilon, that will give a. When we have epsilon combines with omicron, that will give u, omicron, epsilon. So epsilon coming before a long vowel or a diphthong drops out. Thus, for a conjugation, conjugation. The first person, second person, and the third person with the singular and the plural. For all L verbs, we shall therefore follow the pattern we're going to use for phileho. What is the meaning of phileho? Just as I said, it means I love. Now, phileho is a first person singular verb which is translated as I am loving or I love Phileis is a second person singular verb and that is translated as you are loving or you love Philae is the third person singular that is translated he or she or it is loving i will say he or she or it loves the first person plural now for phileo that will be philumen 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 well, before I go on, let me quickly give a kind of brief information on the contraction which takes place. For the first person singular, we are to note that the first person singular, phileho, should be written and pronounced as philo philo for in the new testament the first person singular will of course always be found in its contracted form you won't see phileo what you will see is philo that's to tell you that for phileo you have it as Philo. But for you to be able to identify or recognize the conjugation in the vocabulary or any lexicon, the first person singular 
will be written in its uncontracted form, that is, as phileho with epsilon omega. But take note, the normal, or let me just say, the contracted form are going to be seen in the New Testament Greek manuscripts. So, master the contracted form. Just take note of the uncontracted form of the first person singular for you to them for find it easy to recognize the method of conjugation at once. Now, I repeat, philo is the first person singular for phileho and it is translated I am loving or I love. Philex, that is, the second person singular is translated you are loving or you love. Philae, Philae, that is the third person singular is translated as he or she or it is loving or he or she or it loves. The next in the contracted form, first person plural, Philumen, Philumen, you don't Say philo -umen. No, that's a diphthong. Philumen is translated we are loving or we love. Now, the second person plural of leo. Now, in the contracted form, philate, philate. You can therefore see that the epsilon epsilon we have in the uncontracted form, in the contracted form. It's seen as epsilon iota, and that's the combination that forms the contraction, which gives epsilon iota, A. So, philate is translated, you are loving or you love. And the last on the list is philusine, philusine, philusine. Is translated they are loving or they love if you look at the uncontracted form we have feel usin right good the epsilon coming before a long vowel I mean a, a, a diphthong the diphthong affecting the epsilon we therefore make the epsilon drops out. And that's the reason why we only have the diphthong vowel without, with the epsilon dropping out. So we have philusine as our third person plural, which is therefore translated, they are loving or they love. Please and please. Note the rules of contraction of eho verse. The rules, as we mentioned earlier on. For emphasis sake, I would just like to go through again. So, epsilon plus epsilon gives A, epsilon iota. Epsilon plus omicron gives U, omicron epsilon. Why epsilon plus a long vowel or diphthong? The epsilon we have to drop out. So don't forget, in the New Testament, the first person singular we of course always be found in its contracted form. Now, let's quickly go over to the vocabulary section. Let's go through the vocabulary together, as you can see on screen. These are the uncontracted forms of eho verbs. 
and these are just to help you to identify or recognize them at once. But when you are to conjugate, ensure you make use of the contracted form. For the contracted form are going to be seen in the New Testament Greek manuscript. Now, let's go together. Aiteo. Aiteo. That is Aito in the contracted form. The word means I ask or I ask for. The next. Blasphemeo. Blasphemeo. So in the contracted form, that would be blasphemo. Blasphemo. That means I blaspheme. The next. Julogeo. 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 In the contracted form would be Julogo. Julogo. That is, I bless. The next. Zeteo. Zeteo. That is, I seek. So the contracted form of zeteo is zeto. The next. Teoreho. Teoreho. The contracted form of teoreho is teoro. Teoro. That word means I look at or I see. The next. Kaleo. Kaleo in the contracted form would be kalo. Kalo. Kalo means I call. The next. Laleo. The contracted form for laleo is lalo. Lalo means I speak. I know you're familiar with glossolalia. So glossolalia means speaking in tongues. So lalo means I speak. Now, matureho, matureho. The contracted form for matureho is maturo, maturo. Maturo means I bear witness. The next, metanoeho. The contracted form for metanoeho is metanoho, metanoho, metanoho. Means I repent. The next, miseo. The contracted form for miseo is miso. So miso means I ate. The next, poiheho. Poiheho in the contracted form is poiho. Poiho. The word means I do or I make. The next, thereho. Thereho in the contracted form is thero. Thero. Thero means I keep. And the last is the phileho that we've considered as a pattern for eo verbs. So it was phileho I love. Here we come to the end of lesson four. Thanks for being attentive. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Thank you for participating in this class. Do you have questions? Then drop them at the comment box. Definitely you receive response to them all. Thank you once again. God bless you. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Moon, Si. Omicron Pyro, Sigma Tau, Ypsilon Fiki, C, Omega.